He's dropping, let's say, for Ajay Shakira and um, Mr. Shelly will stop it. Okay, so let's begin. Please help with um, the volume uh, just slightly. Okay, take it fair. So let's start. Um, yesterday we started the reading test and we were able to go through the important things which we call the three T's covering the trick, the tips, and um, the techniques. So yesterday, I'm sure we were able to understand how to apply the bracket trick around our answers. Having identified the primary answer, then other ones could stand as supporting answers. So the supporting answers should or can be in brackets. In a case of no more than three words, if you have to put two words in bracket, please ensure that they are in separate brackets. Don't forget that as you put them in one bracket, then it will automatically annul those words. Then we also went for not to talk about the tips, which um, which we treated two different things. One was reading instructions. We hope you know exactly what is expected of you. And the second one was um, a little formula, Q plus B plus Q equal A, where you are advised strongly to um, work on your reading by taking your questions first. So identifying the keywords in each question, then after that you go to the passage and read, and while you read, you underline information that you feel are related to or related to the keywords in the question. And so many other things too that we understood from the um, Q's plus B plus B before B. It helps to manage your time and so many others. Then we went further to talk about the techniques where we um, treated about six headings under, under the techniques, beginning with paraphrase, down to scheming, scanning, underlining, jotting, labeling, making notes, and rolling or crossing out. So we're able to take all of those areas to have better understanding and experience of the reading test. So today we are looking at reading topics. Consciously or unconsciously, we actually solve questions under several or different headings. So today let's identify those topics. So when we find them, we'll be able to remember how best to solve such questions. So it will also help us to gain higher accuracies when it comes to our answers. First, we have matching, oops, matching paragraphs. Not matching headings. Not matching headings. Matching paragraphs. Because already we have matching headings down here. So the first is matching. Paragraphs. So, matching paragraphs is the easiest topic in reading tests. The easiest topic in reading tests. How does this work? You don't need to go by the practice of reading questions first, um, going through the passage, then going back to the question before you find your answers. In matching paragraphs, you just go straight to once you identify 
that this is a matching paragraph session. What you need to do is understand how many words you have to write as answer. Of course, in matching paragraphs, you have to choose A or B or C. That's an identify the paragraph that actually has such information or certain information. So what you need to do is go to the first question, pick it, then go to the passage. For the answers, there are three major locations where your answers are fixed for matching paragraphs questions. So you can find your answers either in the first sentence of a paragraph, or the second sentence of a paragraph, or the last sentence of a paragraph. These are the three locations where your answers are going to be fixed. Linda, do you understand this? Your answers are always fixed either at the first sentence, or the second sentence, or the last sentence of each paragraph. Please. Don't try to start reading the paragraph to understand anything. It's not, that's not what you're doing. Matching paragraphs, questions. Matching paragraphs. The questions, answers are usually fixed either at the first sentence or the second sentence or the last sentence of each paragraph. Um, hi, Mr. Shekera. Please, are you online? Mr. Shekera, are you online? Sorry. How do you... Mr. Shekera, are you online? Okay. All right. Good morning. Good morning, madam. Matching paragraph questions. How do you know... Identify that yeah. this is matching yeah. paragraph. To identify matching paragraph section of questions, you you get to when you read the instruction that is directing or telling you what to do, it will mention paragraphs twice or more. The instruction section will mention the word paragraphs twice or more. This is how you identify that this is matching paragraphs. If it's for other topics. You will not hear paragraphs mentioned twice. You only see that paragraphs is mentioned once, then labeled A to Z. But if it is matching paragraphs, you see that from the list of paragraphs labeled A to G, which paragraph is mentioned twice? Others will say which statement has, which information has, identified this, which sentence that, summary that. That's for others. The formatting paragraphs to mention the word paragraph twice and the instruction section before the new question. Please, this is how to identify that this is matching paragraphs. So once you are able to identify that this is matching paragraphs, quickly go to um, question one. Read it. Identify the keywords in the question. Because in the paragraphs, they will be paraphrased. So from that question, go to the first paragraph, check first sentence. Second sentence, last sentence. If it doesn't give you your answer, go to the next paragraph. First, second, last. Then there is something you really need to know and understand when it comes to matching paragraphs. When the question says something like, um, which countries promote so so and so? Which countries? You might find a paragraph that mentions a country that promotes something. A country that promotes something. That's not a question. The question says which countries. Maybe you should look for two or more countries in one paragraph. So when you read a question, ensure that any paragraph you're choosing aligns with the words, the form of the words in the question. So if the form of if the keywords appear in plural, ensure that your answers are in consonance with plural. So don't go rushing a particular paragraph that has just an indicator. Whereas the question mentions a plural word, maybe you should look for two or more indicators. Please, do you understand this? Because in reading tests, there are lots of distractors that people just rush and pick and there are no answers. Okay? So we shall get, we will go through practical session perhaps tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to use the projector. We will see how to identify these um, 
um, topics, how to treat them and how to find the answer. So we project all of that so it will be easier for you when you begin to practice properly. But just understand this explanation that matching paragraphs, you'll find your answers either in the first sentence or second sentence or the last sentence of each paragraph. Then in some cases, matching paragraphs, questions or instructions will indicate that you may find two or you may use a paragraph more than once. That means two answers can come one paragraph. So you have to be very careful. So let's go to the next. Identifying or locating information. They are very synonymous. Identifying or locating information. Identifying or locating information. Now, how does this work? Identifying or locating information is or are reading, they are reading topics that test your ability to locate paragraphs that express certain information given to you as questions. They are topics that assess your ability to locate paragraphs that contain certain information which are established as the question. Identifying or locating information are topics in reading tests that evaluate or assess your ability to identify paragraphs that contain certain information which are listed as your questions. Please, you understand this? From the question section, you will see a list of information which are actually your questions. So you might see questions, um, Eight. Okay. You might see questions eight to fourteen or eight to twelve. Now the eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, there will be different headings or information. Now, your task. Your task as a test taker is when you read this information, you are to go to the paragraphs and identify which paragraph has something or expresses something like this. Please you understand this. Now, this information you may have read right here as question will not be expressed exactly in the passage in the paragraphs. They are going to be paraphrased. They will use they will use synonyms or phrases that still connote the same thing. Please do you understand this. So that's how to find your answers. You read this, take notice of the keywords in this in the information given to you as questions. So when you go to the passage, as you go through paragraphs, identify which paragraph expresses something like that. So how do you find your answers? Locating or matching information also enjoy the same practice as matching paragraphs, but that's for 60%. 60% of your answers are situated at the same locations as matching paragraphs. Remaining 40% are in the middle of the paragraphs. Do you understand this? 60% of the answers for locating or identifying information are situated at first, second, or last sentences. Oh, and locating information. 60% of the answers are situated at first, second, and last sentences. However, the remaining 40% of your answers for locating or identifying information are situated at the middle of your paragraphs. So you have to apply the same approach. But when you don't find it, the middle is where you will find them. The middle of the paragraphs. Please let me know if you don't understand what I'm explaining, Mr. Shego and uh, Hadja Shakira. Please. Is it clear to you? Okay. Uh, Mr. Shego, are you all right, Hadja, you are you understood, you've understood it, right?
Okay, nice. So let's proceed. Sentence completion. What sentence completion? Okay. Pardon? Mr. Shego, are you saying something? Identifying information and locating information, are they clear to you? Okay. Now, I explained that for identifying information or locating information, your, your task is, let's assume you are treating questions covering 8 to 14. Now, for these numbers 8 to 14, you'll be required to read headings. You'll be required to read the headings, and these headings, you are meant to go to the paragraphs and identify which paragraph has this information that is written as your question. So you need to go to each paragraph, read in between, especially first, second, and last sentences, to identify if this information in question eight can be found there. So for, for instance, a question might say, um, joining a club, Joining a club is the information written here. So you go to the paragraph. One of the paragraphs may be talking about being a member of an association, you are required to show certain um, proofs, such as expressing your philosophy in life, showing your profile attained over time, whether you are a philanthropist or not, your ability to be selfless in rendering services to the people as a way of giving back to the society. To, uh, to become a bona fide member of the society, you are required to also, uh, also show your financial strength. So all of this boils down to being a member of a club. But the paragraph would never say being a member of a club. It might just express joining a society. So the society is paraphrased as club. Why joining is expressing being a member. Ayo Shakira, do you understand this? Yes, please. Okay, now in every paragraph, there must be at least a sentence, at least in every paragraph, right? And um, what indicates that a sentence has been established is when you have a full stop, is that correct? Yes. yes. Fine. So when you go to a particular paragraph, check how many full stops you have in it. That will tell you how many sentences you have there. So if you are able to identify how many full stops you have, check the first sentence that has the first full stop, second sentence that has the second full stop, and the last sentence where the, where the last full stop is. These are, where, these are locations where your answers to matching paragraphs are usually fixed. Is this clear? Yeah, it's clear. Then I also said that um, for identifying or matching or locating information, that your answers can also be found either in the first, second, or last sentences. But it's usually for about 60% of the um, questions that you find answers at that location. However, the remaining 40% of the answers you find are usually in the middle of the sentences, in the middle of the paragraphs, rather. 
Do you understand this? Yes, I do. Um, Hajj Shakrat, do you understand what I've just explained? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, tomorrow we are going to have practical session of this. So you would be required to try to see if you make it then. So of course I'll be projecting it. So if you are not here anyway, we can watch the video. Thank you. Welcome. Alright. I have a lot. Okay. Alright. Okay. So let's go to sentence completion. For sentence completions. Um, it's just like what we practice while in secondary schools, where you'll be given a paragraph or a passage. It could be extracts from the main passage. So those extracts, you would have blank spaces where you're meant to provide missing answers. Sometimes one word answer. So what you're required to do is to, do, to pick the missing answer word for word, copy and paste. Don't try to paraphrase for any reason. Right? So, if you are meant to provide a particular word, of course, you need to read the instruction to know how many words your answer should come. So, if it says one word, please ensure that you just go for one word. And then, the good thing about matching um, sentence completion is that your answers are usually in descending order of magnitude. So, locate your first answer, then other words will come below it. It doesn't take you back and forth. It doesn't. So if you find the first answer, other words will keep coming down. Then please, it doesn't mean that if you find your first answer in the first paragraph, second answer must come in the second paragraph. No, it doesn't work that way. You may find your first answer within the first two sentences of the first paragraph. Second answer may fall at the last sentence of the same first paragraph. Then the second paragraph may not give you any answer. They might just omit that. Then your third answer will come from the third paragraph. Fourth answer will never take you back to second paragraph. It will keep coming down. Please, do you understand this? Now, there's something you also need to understand. For sentence completions, although they are extracts from the main passage, but the extract is usually paraphrased as against the way they are structured in the main paragraphs. Do you understand this? When you have paragraphs in the, in the passage, to form, um, to form the content for sentence completion, in the way of, in, 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 there's what we call guided composition. So to form that guided composition, they, will go to, they might go to the first paragraph, then pick information from the last sentence of the first paragraph. Now that information will be paraphrased. So they write it, and then they go to maybe the third paragraph, pick the first sentence of the third paragraph, join it to that one they picked from the first paragraph. Do you understand it? So they just pick information from different paragraphs and constitute a, an extract. So when you read the first part of a um, sentence completion question, you have to locate where exactly it was picked from. That's where the answer lies. Now, when you find that, the next answers, you look, you find them below where you got the first answer. They may not be following each other immediately. But if you don't see it immediately, go down in front you will be finding those answers. Do you understand it? Now what I was trying to explain is, even if they paraphrase the uh, guided um, composition of sentence completion, you writing your answer, don't paraphrase your own answer. Write the answer exactly the way it is written in the passage. Sorry. In reading, do you have um, do you have provision to write out your answers like sentences? No. Okay. So what do you paraphrase? Huh? Are you trying to are you imagine what to paraphrase? No, when you said uh, don't paraphrase it, write it exactly the way that do we have that um, provision for writing out answers? In full sentence. No. Okay. Now, what? Why I'm saying this is because some persons may read the paraphrased information extract. They will read it, and then the exact word they're supposed to write may not make a lot of sense to them. 
So they will try to reform the world in a way that they feel it, it makes more sense. Do you understand? So by that, the answer would be incorrect. Then you're meant to pick the exact word in the sentence where that um, missing information is supposed to come from. So write exactly the way it is. Don't worry. Like the last question, the last mistake I made to do, and we did not, and I could stop growing. Ah ha! And I could stop growing. So because of that little mistake, yeah. it, it affected the answer. We actually saw the answer. So, in sentence completion, please just copy and paste. Yes, that's just the way to Please, do you understand? Mr. Shekhar, Okay. Yes, I do. Now, summary answers are short answers. Very tricky, but simple. What do you do? For short and summary answers, you are meant to look for the specific requirement of the question. Let's look at this instance. The question may say, um, the authority is willing to pay between 100, between 10 to 200 million naira to anyone who would blow, uh, blow the whistle about, on a corrupt, about a corrupt official. The government is willing to pay between 100 to 200 million to anyone who will blow the whistle against any corrupt official. Now, that's what is written in the passage. For short and summary answers, the question will ask you, what is the maximum amount the government is willing to pay to pay anyone that has information about the corrupt official? So, some persons will say 100 to 200 million. That would be incorrect. Because between 100 and 200, there is a maximum, there is a minimum. So, if it says what's the maximum, keep only what? 200 million only please do you understand this so you are meant to be very specific according to the question now if a question says to submit your cv and credentials for the job recruitment you are meant to you are meant to um meet with the human resource officer who would go through all you have submitted scrutinize and and ascertain your um qualification for that position. Now, question would, would say, if you are looking to get employed or hired by a, the organization, who should you meet? Who will you meet? Huh? Human resource. Human resource. Huh? Your question. He said HR official. No, I said um, to submit your CV and credentials for the opening advertised on one of the dailies, you are strongly advised to, uh, to tender your application as well as your credentials and CV to the human resource personnel who will scrutinize all that you have submitted and ascertain your qualification, whether it is best for the organization. Now, question. If you're looking to get hired for the vacant position advertised, who should you meet? Human resource person. Human resource person. Mr. Shego, who would you meet? Human resource personnel. Mrs. Shakira, who would you meet? Okay. Now let's assume that the instruction says no more than three words. Three words. And um, it says. The human resource, the human resource officer. The answer requires that article day. Your answer requires the article day because the word day specifies the exact person. Please, I need to understand this. I just want to ask you one question. Based on the other, the first, um, the one you said between hundred to two hundred. What like um, what if the question didn't come at being certain or maybe like you said maximum how much is the maximum fee they pay, right? I say you can pick two hundred. Then between hundred to two hundred. What if they're not starting or didn't actually say maximum? Okay, thank you. Um 
That will be ions shooting themselves in the foot. Okay, so it actually doesn't cover. It must specify. Okay. The reason it has to be specific is because the instruction will tell you no more than dash word and a number. Right? So when you write 100 to 200 million, you are writing two numbers. So automatically, right? Automatically you are going contrary to the instruction. So I understand what you are saying. I just want, I don't know if they've changed the format of this exam, but previously, I know that reading is all MCQ. It's all MCQ, it's not all MCQ. So there are places where you have to write, you will. You have to write two, three words, one word. MCQs okay. are just, what you might see, just one section. Covering. That's the objective. Yes, MCQs, multiple choice questions. Okay. ABC. You might just see it in one section or two sections maximum. Highest three questions for ABC, or if, although different kinds of questions come with their different templates of questions, right? But MCQs are not, you have to write. And correct spellings matter a lot. So when you spell a word in wrongly, it also affects your answer. Please, so you have to write. So what I was trying to say is, if you are expected to give a range of answers, 100 to 200, it should definitely affect the instruction. The instruction never exceeds a win number, right? But it can be one word, two words, three words, and or a number. So they will always be specific, right? So here, you need to watch out for the exact word that you are expected to write. So if it's, if it's asking about who to meet, especially portfolio or designation, please, the word they, often follow the answer because it, it gives you specifics, all right? And Mr. Shekhi, do you understand? Yes, I do. Is Anja Shekhi, are you following? Okay. So in this instance, let's take this example you gave now. The answer is the human resource personnel. That is four words. That is yes. And yes, they may ask you not more than three words. Yes. So how do you put it? Because if you put the in brackets, you have still exceeded four words. So how will you make that three words? Yes. First, I was given an instance. So I have to make it in a way that it would align in the general okay. um, I was given an instance. So, but my emphasis is that my emphasis is that ensure to carry that word there. So most times you might see the medical director, the um, recruiting officer, right? The so so and so, but three words maximum. But if it is the human resource of the moment, it's, it's gone. But you can't No, if it is the human resource personnel, four words, bracket two does not seem. Every word is visible in this context. So the bracket three works hand in glove with instructions. You must write in consonance with the instruction. Okay, so I believe this is. Aja Shakira, do you have a question? Okay, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly what uh, Madam Wright here just asked me. For instance, I said the human resource personnel, right? Four words. So in this case, IELTS will make sure that the designation or position of portfolio is just having two words, then the article they would come in. Please, do you understand this? So it, it may be something like the managing director, the um, chief, chief medical director, chief medical director. Um, there are ways they will just coin it. Just understand that the answer must conform with the instruction. That's what I want you to take home. 
So if you write four words, please, that would be incorrect because you've gone contrary to the provisions of the instruction. Is it clear to you? Okay. Now let's go to flowcharts. For flowcharts, IELTS test your ability to pay attention to details. You'll be given a very long passage composed in paragraphs. Now, the passage would be exposing a particular ideology or philosophy. It could be about the life cycle of a mosquito, for instance. It might be about the evolution of man. It could be on anything. It could be on a particular plant or part of a plant. Now, the thing is, for flowcharts, the paragraphs will be exposing the different stages of different evolutions. If it's talking about the life cycle of a mosquito, for instance, the first thing it will talk about is giving you an insight of the species of mosquitoes that exist, especially at the particular area of case, their, their case study. So they will tell you the types of mosquitoes that exist there. They will give you the genders of mosquitoes and what they may be called as well. Then it will give you expositions about the survival um, characteristics of the, of the mosquitoes. The environment they breed, how they grow, what they feed on, how they survive. And then after that, it will take you through the first stage, which is the egg. So the egg will be laid at certain environment, they will describe how such environment looks like, whether it's dirty, or lots of water, or kept environment. Then it will tell you how, how long it takes for the eggs to mature. Then it will talk about the temperature the eggs require to hatch. Right? So when the egg hatches and then it goes to the next stage, which is the lava, right? Then it talks about lava, how the mosquito appears. Maybe it looks like a little hair with uh, a little tail or something to describe it, talk about its characteristics, how it survives, what it feeds on, the temperature it needs to survive, or else it may die and all that. The movements, how it moves and all that. Next stage of paragraph talks about the pupa, that it's actually developing into a full mosquito kind of. It will give you the, the looks of the, of the pupa, it will give you how it feeds, the movements it makes, and everything. Then the last one is to tell you about the adults, right? That's the full grown mosquito. It will tell you the appearance and characteristics of a full grown mosquito, how it moves, how it feeds, how it um, how it gets into the human body with its purposes, and all those things it will talk about them. So and then it, it will give you other expositions about mosquitoes and its evolutions or changes or stages. Then your question. For your question they will draw the different stages of the mosquito random. They're not going to arrange it for you to just like this is the egg. No. They'll just draw different things. So you'll be required to identify which stage and which paragraph describes this particular stage. Do you understand something like this? So you'll be, you'll be required to identify which paragraph describes this stage of the mosquito. Then after that, you'll also be required to fill in some missing information about the different stages. There will be some key words of different stages that will be omitted. So you'll be required to go to the paragraph where that was mentioned. Pick it and that will be your answer. Now, for flowcharts, answers are chronological and descending. So when you find your first answer, the next one comes afterwards. It doesn't ever take you back and forth, never. So find the first answer, the subsequent answers will come on that. That's the way flowchart works. There are some flowcharts that will come in form of the drawing of a particular invention or innovation. So you'll be required to read a passage which exposes or gives you detailed information about that innovation, who manufactured it, when it was first manufactured, who tested it, how it looks like, the processes it takes to, to arrive at a particular... What you tend to enjoy would be 
you are just learning about that thing for the first time in your life. You may not have ever seen, ever seen such a thing. So that's why I always tell people, don't go to see something you enjoy in a written test. Reading test passages are boring, very boring, but some are educating. Some will expose you to things you never knew. Well, your, your target as a test taker is to get your answer way over. Right? So uh, just prepare your mind for that. So when you read a particular, sometimes there are passages that talk about Germany, um, water, water gadgets. You know, Germany has no water. Germany has no natural water, right? So they use their sucking way. So Germany as a country, for instance. Okay, like well, like well, like the one you flush. Well, oh, okay. when you flush it, it goes. Mm -hmm. They go there and get water. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds funny, <laughs> but ironically, Germany has the best water in the world from the software. In the world, no country has water that is as good as the one in Germany. The war, during the war, they destroyed their waterways. So they have no flowing stream. So they have the best gadgets that process water. In fact, currently, they have a gadget that converts moisture, air, into water. Yeah, they have that. So you might come across a passage that talks about water producing or processing machine. So to tell you how that water, how that gadget works, who manufactured it, the country where it's used, then the shape of the gadget, the different stages, filtration stages and titration stages the water goes, and how it comes out as the purest water in the world. Then as your question, they will draw that gadget. Now when they draw the gadget, they would highlight areas you have to label. They will highlight areas you have to give names. And those areas are described in detail in the passage. So you will see the drawing. They might draw something that looks like a pinnacle. And you see a pipe. The pipe goes, then it continues. Then this one breaks it down here. So one of these things will be described, the whole of these things. And the flowchart. Yes, uh -huh. also the flowchart, yes. So they will tell you how the water comes in through um, a triangle-like shape. Then it goes into a, a base that has two arms, one on the right, one on the left. Then it has also a base that has something like a square. Now under it is a vertical rod that connects to a pipe which curves from the um, center to the east, down to south region, and a little bit to the west. Look at it. From east, <laughs> south, west. Okay, so well, the, uh, the illustrations will be in that paragraph. Passage, yes. yes. Passage. You see all of it detailed. Detailed. Right? <laughs> so you have to. So you will find it. <laughs> so, it will tell you the connectivities, how it moves, how different things go, and then the final product. Now, on this diagram, you'll be required to label this. This might be I. This might be I, I. This might be I, I, I. This might be I, B. Do you understand this? Now, on the, on, in the paragraph, this part was described and given a name. So you're meant to identify that name from the passage and write it as you can see. Please, you understand this? You may also be required to identify how long does water last before it goes through the vertical or where does water move from before it goes through the vertical uh, rod connected to a pipe. This is where it moves from. 
So there's a name for this place. So that's what you're to write as an answer. Mr. Shago, do you understand this? Aja Shakirat, do you understand what I've just explained? Okay, so let's proceed. That's for flowcharts. Let's go to MCQs. MCQs simply mean multiple choice questions. You find that in reading text. Now, the multiple choice questions just come with options, letters A to maybe E, or F, or G, or H, depending. So you are often required to pick the best option that answers the question asked. So the best option is where the trick comes in. Because every option has something to do with the passage. Every option. But there is only one correct answer. And that correct answer, you have to read the question word for word to actually understand what the question is asking. So that's how you are able to pick the right answer. For instance, a question might require you to establish what the writer feels about the 14th century war. So you go to the passage, you, you find you read about the war, you see how the um, writer expresses him or herself as regards his opinion, what the war may have caused to the economy of the people as well as the individuals living there. So you want to carefully link what the writer expressed in the passage to one of those options. Please, do you understand this? MCQs, you need to read the instructions, you need to read the questions, you need to identify where they are referring to in a person. Sometimes they may give you a clue that um, under construction, what is the most important thing that people are always looking for? That means the passage has um, foundation, construction, and maybe uh, beautification or decoration. So, you go to where construction is in the passage and you look for what is considered to be the most important thing to the people. Likewise, the maps. The maps also works like the flowcharts. So if a passage describes a particular city, you may see a map of that particular city and you'll be expected to locate certain positions which are already established in the passage. Please understand it. Now let's go to matching headings. This is where the job comes. Matching headings. Mm -hmm. How do we solve matching headings?
Okay. So for matching headings, these are very key steps you should take. First, you need to read the instructions carefully and understand what you're meant to do. Second, you have to go and read the questions carefully to identify the keywords therein. Each question has their keywords. So identify the keywords by way of highlighting or underlining. Once you've done that, go to the passage and begin to scheme. Scheming right here means you are reading or read. Now, when you read a passage, read it intentionally because of the identified keywords. So, as you read and locate any information that you feel to relate to those keywords, underline such area or information that you consider to be talking about those keywords. Then, once you're doing, you do this as you read. Do it as you read. Do it as you read. So it um, means you have to go back to the passage and read it from beginning to end. Because there are not of distractors for matching the There are, you will find two or three paragraphs that appear to be talking about the same thing. But um, out of those two or three paragraphs, there's only one that you can read the So the only way to do that is do this. Read and identify the information. Yesterday we talked about what to, what to underline, right? We mentioned what to underline only. So, once you have read each paragraph, besides the fact that you have identified gray words or information, or information you find to be pot uh, um, potential answers, you also need to give tags or captions or titles to each paragraph. It is now you labeling them, giving the headings according to your understanding from each paragraph that you read. Because giving those labels will help you to automatically match. You, you, you realize that what you labeled the paragraph is very similar to a heading that is there. Just that the choice of words will definitely differ. <laughs> So, <laughs> to go and study. <laughs> That's the trouble to get caught waiting with this for So, I don't want to. I can't do that and identify these keywords. I just want to. Okay, okay. Um, Alright, just give me a moment. Okay. Yes. Let, let me just explain this. Then, once you have read, underlined, or highlighted keywords or information that relate to the questions, Label the headings according to your best understanding or caption for them. Then go back to the questions and read each question as you go. Now, once you've read the question, go to the passage where you have read and highlighted and scan to locate the accurate information. Or go to your labels and try to match the headings to the labels you gave each part. So that's the way to go. That's the way to go. Now, how do I identify the keywords, right? Mm -hmm. By being familiar with paraphrase. Paraphrase. When the question or passage says, the people have to travel a long distance just to get to the spot where the gold is printed. And they will say, they embarked on a voyage. On a voyage. Sent in Australia. And it, it took them quite a long time. Covering a wide distance. They are just playing with the heads of testicles. But still expressing the same emotion. So when you see voyage, when you see trip, it is travel. Now, to locate a particular oh, area, yeah, that's another language it's a, oh, it's a like borrowed, it's a borrowed <laughs> English word. From French that's French. Yeah. So they were that. Okay. No, but it's not French. By virtue of its 
input or inclusion in the dictionary, in this dictionary, it's not like that. But when you go to the French, here is voyage, that's the way it's pronounced. But in English, it's voyage, that's the way it's pronounced. Right? So, they look at gold, as mentioned in the passage, nobody will call it as gold. They might look at it as precious stone. It is you that will determine the value of precious stone. So they just play around our heads to see that you are the right candidate for them. Because this is the only test they use for their interview. For instance, Canada. Canada does not have physical interview. This test is their interview. Canada does not know you in person. But this test will help them to know your level of intelligence. Uh -huh. So they, will, they use it to, to filter the algorithms from the internet. They want problem solvers. <laughs> they don't want climbing. <laughs> okay. So these are ways to go to get the matching. Don't rush to pick an answer. You should be the only one. There are lots of distractors. Uh, I, I, I keep saying this because a lot of people fall for that. You see it, it will contain the information you are looking for. You try to see it up as it should be right. That so I always take some time and apply these steps which will help you to make the right choices. Mr. Shekou, do you copy? Yes, I do. Alright, Ajay Shekirat, are you following me? Okay. So that's for margin headings. It's a very it's a very tricky part of reading test. A lot of people find it really challenging. Matching headings, please. Just take some time, study this and apply these steps. Then ensure that your paraphrasing ability is with you when you are doing it. That will help you to also decipher. Okay, let's go to the last part here, identify writer's views. Identify writer's views can be divided into two. So we have this guy. Then we have this guy. Identify writer's views. True, false, not given. Yes, no, not given. How does this work? This is where your judgmental skills and ability are, or will be put to test. I also tend to evaluate whether or not you paid attention to what you are reading. Because they just throw a statement at you and tell you, okay, help me confirm. Is this a true according to the passage, or is it false? Or is it not even given in the passage? So it's only one, only a person who pays attention to what you are reading that can determine whether or not it's true or false or not given. So let's understand this. When can you say that a statement is true? Because for identified writer's views, what you are given as question will be statements. So you are expected to read a passage then go through the statements to determine if each statement is true or false or not given. Please, do you understand this? So when do you establish that a statement is true? A statement can be said to be true if that statement conforms 100% with what the examiner has, what the writer has written in the passage. A statement may be expressed as your question having some digits or symbols. Whereas in the passage, there is no digit or symbol. Rather, it may have been ex expressed in words. But whether it is in digit or words or figures, if it is the same thing, it will mean the same as what is the passage. So the major first step you have to take is recognizing that statement in the passage where it is established. If you find it, check, compare the version in the passage to the statement. 
Compare it word for word. Word for word. That's how you confirm if it's true. So if it is true, write true and that's it. Please, do you have any question with true? I just want to know. I want to just do a recap of what you just said. A statement can be said to be true if the statement conforms with what is written in the passage. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, exactly. That statement must be exact as what is in the passage. Okay. Now, that statement being exact may not be written as words all through. They might change or paraphrase some of the words in the passage to figures in the statement or percentage, or symbol, but it will still mean the same thing. So what you need to do first is to locate where that statement is in the passage. If you find it, compare it word for word. What is written in the passage to what is the statement? What? So if it, if it means same thing, but not word for word, that it means it's not true. It's same thing. Same thing. If it means the same thing, okay. but not what or what maybe some words have been changed to figures. Okay, so that means they are kind of testing your paraphrasing skills. Your, yeah, analysis maybe skills. analysis. Yeah. Your analy okay. analytical ability. So you need to compare the two and confirm that they are the same. That's when you establish that this is true. Okay. Is it, uh, Major Shakira, do you understand this? Yeah. Mr. Shakira, are you following? Mr. Sheikh, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So let's go to false. When can you say that the statement is false? A statement can be said to be false if that statement contradicts or says something that is opposite of what is in the passage. If a statement contradicts what is in the passage, or if a statement has something that is opposite. Gina, is the AC on? Reduce the temperature now so that it will be cool. Hmm? Now, if the statement contradicts what's in the passage, then it's false. If the statement says something that is opposite of what's in the passage, then it is false. Now, the thing is, how do you establish that the entire statement is false? You may realize that from the statement, 90% of the statement is exactly what's in the passage, 90%. So some people will feel that uh -huh, it's the same thing, just this small part here. It's, maybe it's a mistake. They will feel it's a mistake and they will say it's true. It's wrong. So there is no such thing as a mistake. So sometimes contradiction may just be one word, just one word. 99% of that statement may be true, but just one word is opposite of what is used in a passage. The passage might, might use boy, the statement will use girl. But everything apart from the girls is exactly in the passage. So because of girls, a test taker will tell you maybe just this thing. See every other thing you see. Then they will say it's true. Please, I have is testing you. So if they substitute boy for girl, it's to test you. So because of that singular word, it is false. They might also use figure to test you. Every other thing in the statement may be true, but the figure may be higher than what is, what is in the passage. The passage may be 100. The figure in the statement may be 1,000. As humans, we may, we may not be very calm to realize that the statement has three zeros. We may just see one, zero, zero, and you assume that's true, you go to move. Please, I is testing your ability to pay attention to detail. Please. So that's for false. Now, when do we say that a statement is not given? A lot of people feel not given very well because they, miss, they mix or mistake not given for false. They are very slim. The difference is very slim. So when are you ascertain that a statement is not given? A statement can be said to be not given if that statement cannot be found anywhere in the passage. When a statement cannot be found anywhere in the passage. Not being found anywhere in the passage does not mean that the entire statement is not in the passage. Okay. 
you may find 95% of that statement in the passage, but just 5% is an additional information which is not in the passage. 5% is just an additional information that is not in the passage. The every other thing is in the passage. So some people may say it's false because of that additional. It is not false. That additional has made it not to be in the passage, so it is not given in the passage. Please, let's not overanalyze. They are testing your ability to pay attention to detail. So if it's not in the passage, it doesn't mean it's false. It simply means it's not given in the passage. But if it is a passage, but in an opposite direction, then it is false. If it is in a passage, but it's more than what is given, it is false. If it is in a passage, but the gender is including the two, maybe passage says boy or male children, but the statement says children generally. Children can comprise both boys and girls, right? So this is false. Please, do you understand this? So, if it is not given, it is not in the passage. If it is given and it's exact, it is true. If it is given, but it's also, it has something that contradicts, then it is false. Please, do we understand this? Yeah. Ayah Shakiras, do you have any question? No question, right? Mr. Shegu, do we have any question? Any question? Okay. Um, Gina, we are going to take on a, a quick practice. It's just a 24 question reading test. Just 24 questions. Now, the 24 questions, you get me that particular passage that ha has. Um, the first page looking like a cover, uh, uh, cover book or cover page. Um, she will snap the pages and send to you, to your WhatsApp. Uh, Ajay Shakira, she will send it to your WhatsApp. Mr. Shekou, she will send it to your WhatsApp. You will have to spend only 25 minutes to solve the 24 questions. And these questions cover these topics we have just treated. So once we are ready, I'll set our time. Then you go and solve it. We're going to end the session. So I will, I will snap and send to you. Then you solve and forward back to us on WhatsApp. We will mark and report back to you. Then we'll continue tomorrow. Please, do you have any question? That's fine. All right, so that'll be it for today. Um, you will be looking out for the questions or the passages and their questions on your WhatsApp handle shortly by God's grace. So we'll continue tomorrow. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Gina, you'll get your copies quickly.